back for another week. March is here. The madness is upon us. We're going to talk about the tournament. We're going to talk about some NCAA tournament, some players that stood out to us during conference tournament weekend. And yes, we're going to talk about the Rockets game because down 10 points at the end of the first quarter had me all kinds of nervous. But the Bulls got the win. 119, 111. We're going to recap it here on today's episode of Believe in Bulls there on the Believe Network presented by BetOnline.ag. I'm your host, Nick Schultz, alongside my partner, former Bulls bench pop member and Tennessee Vol, live and direct from Los Angeles, CJ Watson. Hmm. CJ, Bulls got a, I mean, that that win, I guess, was needed. It wasn't pretty, but it was a win. Yeah, as long as you get a win, like I've always said in the NBA, is definitely a hard task to do. And as long as they got it, you know, it's good to go. Just keep on, keep winning. Yeah. And I mean, they lost to the Rockets earlier in the year at home. That was the Rockets' first road win of the year. Just throwing that back out there. So, you know, I saw the 10-point first quarter deficit, got nervous, but they got the win. Everything's fine. Everything's Jake. But, you know, we're going to look ahead here. I want to look at March Madness because there's some guys that intrigue me. We're going to look at draft position, even not just for the Bulls. I'm talking about just guys that I want to see in the league. Like, I know you've got a couple year in SEC guy. SEC yep. tournament was a lot of fun. We were talking about that before we started ro- before we started rolling here. Yep. SEC tournament was a good time. We're going to recap it. I'm going to tell you who I think is going to win the tournament. You know, I'll probably be wrong, but I'm going to tell you who I think is going to win. <laughs> After, tell you about our great friends, BetOnline.ag. BetOnline remains your number one source for all your sports betting needs this season. Everything from pro and college basketball to UFC, MMA, and more. You will always find the latest odds, team matchup information, player news, and game trends at BetOnline. With live betting options, free contests, and live scores for almost any sport or game imaginable, BetOnline is truly the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite leagues and events. March Madness is upon us. The tournament's here. Bet on all of it, starting with the first four tonight at Bet Online. And if you're a big Bears fan like I am, you probably had a pretty good few days. If you're curious, Justin Fields is 18 to 1 to win the MVP at Bet Online after the DJ Moore trade and the defense moves. Ryan Poles, man, build him a statue. Build Lovey Smith a statue, too, while we're at it. All of it at Bet Online. What are you waiting for? Head to the website today or use your mobile device to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use our promo code BELIEVE to receive your rewards. It's B-L-E-A-V. Get that 50% welcome bonus at Bet Online. It's where the game starts. And don't forget, we have an official t-shirt of our show. Jordan Pippi 98, The Last Dance at shop.believe.com, the official store of the Believe Network. There's a lot of great stuff there to support all the shows on the network. But our t-shirt, Jordan Pippi 98, The Last Dance, shop.believe.com. The link is in my Twitter and Instagram bios. Okay. Before we get to the tournament here, let's talk about that Rockets game. Because the Bulls win that 119-111. They trailed 32-22 to after the first quarter. And I want to say Zach had 11 of those 22 points. They got the win. Like I mean, it wasn't pretty. But like we always say, a win's a win at this point in the year. And now they're back in that conversation for the play-in tournament. So I'm going to quit making predictions. Yeah, that's all they like I said, that's all they got to do is just keep winning. Uh, Obviously, we've been saying that the whole year. It's definitely hard for them to do. And uh, hard for them to get in a winning streak, but I think that's what they have to do to, like I say, get get back in contention in that uh, playing tournament. And hopefully they can do that. I think uh, Pat Bev has to be more aggressive. Uh, they need scoring from him, uh, not just you know leadership and defense. They, I think he has to score the ball for them to be uh, effective and uh, for them to win games. Well, he did a good job of that against Houston. Sixteen points, ten rebounds, five assists. He went full Pat Bev late in that fourth yeah. quarter. <laughs> what I saw, I mean, he was. John, he was talking like that was full Pat Bev. And I mean, I'm, I'll be straight up. I, I didn't get to watch the game. I went to my old high school. They did Mama Mia. My, my cousin yeah, Cece cool. was Donna. My other cousin Mikey was Sky. My cousin Abby directed it. So I had to be there. They did a great job, yeah. by the way. So I, that definitely a shout out to them, by the way. I planned that. But, you know, <laughs> I'm following through ESPN, following through alerts I get on my phone as I, my brightness was all the way down. A little close for comfort. But like we said, Get the win here. Now the record, this is such an interesting situation here. I wrote the Bulls off for dead. What was that, last week? Last <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now they're 31 and 36. They have won two games in a row, including over the freaking Nuggets. Didn't think that was going to happen. And here we are now. They're a half game up in the 10 spot in the East. Yeah. They're a half game back of Toronto for the nine seed. It, it continues to be an enigma is the best way to put yeah. it. This team is just impossible to solve. Yeah, it's definitely a roller coaster ride. They're up and down throughout the whole season. And like I said, like if they can find their stride these last, uh, you know, couple of weeks, uh, it definitely can you know, bid them well. And uh, hopefully they can maybe move up to that ninth spot. And like I said, just get in the playing tournament and, and anything can happen from there because they have the talent to win. Uh, like I said, they just got to be more efficient and more effective uh, from all areas. Uh, bench has to be a little bit better. Uh, but I think they, they, I think they can do it. 
You think I know better than to make a prediction about this team than when I said they're not going to make the play in? <sighs> Here they are. 10 right. seed. Here's the standings. Watch. They're half game back of Toronto for the nine, two games back of Atlanta for the eight. There's starting to be some separation there between seven and 10 finally, because there was a while there. It was like two games separated seven yep. and 10. And yep. we won't even talk about how jam packed the Western Conference standings are because right now, Golden State is the five seed at 36 and 33. Oklahoma City is the 11 seed at 33 and 35. That's how jam packed the West is. The East is ranked amateur right now. Yeah. I mean, that's where the Bulls are. There are now three teams officially eliminated from the playoffs. It is March 14th. Three teams eliminated the Pistons, the Spurs, and the Rockets. Everyone else is fair game. So the Bulls definitely are not eliminated yet. And to me, if you're not competing for a top a top four spot, just make Orlando have the worst pick you can, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I think they still want to be competitive and that's what you want to be. They're they're still right there. Like they're still knocking on the door and they're still at the end today, they still be in the playing tournament. So I think they got to go out there and just just go out there and play and uh you know uh, stay healthy of course but uh just play and be more efficient like I said before and just uh everyone has to be on their A game pretty much from these last couple weeks. Look at the lottery odds the Bulls now this changed big time over the last 24 hours or so according to Tankathon which is a great resource for this stuff. The Bulls <laughs> yesterday had they were upward of like 30% for the top 4 pick. I mean it was like okay you're in a Interesting spot. Now those odds are 20.3% to, yep. for a top four pick. And that number is important because if it's in the top four, they keep the pick that's going to Orlando as part of the Vucevic trade. Now there's another team you have to watch too. Portland is actually closer to the number one pick than the Bulls now. Portland is 31 and 37. That's a half game better. The Blazers have a 29% chance of a top four pick. That pick needs to be outside the top 14 for the Bulls to get it. So there's a lot that has to happen here. I have not been confident in the lottery odds all year. I will never be confident in the lottery odds. So right now I still say, go make a playoff run and don't give Orlando two picks in the lottery. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because that Orlando team is going to be good. I think in a couple of years, they have a lot of young talent. You don't want to give them any extra, any extra uh, uh, ammunition because <laughs> that's definitely what they need. Cause like I said, they're going to be uh, young and talented and uh, they're coming for sure. I mean, they've got two picks right now. If, if depending on the lottery, if they were to stay where they are right now, I'm not going to bother simulating the lottery because then the Bulls are going to get the number one pick and it's going to throw off my entire argument. So <laughs> as the lottery is right now, according to like some mock drafts, Magic could be in conversation for someone from the G League, like Overtime Elite. And at number nine, they've got the name you won't say, Grady Dick out of Kansas. <laughs> with the number nine is who kind of Tankathon's got mocked to them. So they, yep. they've got a chance here to get some dudes. That's why yeah. if, you're, if you're the Bulls, I, unless you plan on losing out and really – really hoping you land in that top four give Orlando middle of the pack granted this is still I think it's a better draft than it's getting credit for in terms of like yeah. shooting and guard play those are some names I'm going to point to in a little bit but give don't let Orlando get a guy like Brandon Miller or Scoot Henderson right. or anybody like that yeah, yeah for sure and I, I forgot uh I know I don't follow it as much but I know uh you said the front office did they ever come out and say if anything about the trade deadline or why they did do anything they want to be competitive. Their goal is the playoffs. Right. I mean, they're, they've oh, said okay. all year their goal has been playoffs, playoffs, playoffs. Yeah, yeah. This team has not looked like a playoff team. So, I right, mean, yeah. this team, if I mean, there are days they have. Go back to that game right. against Denver. Look at what they did against the Nuggets. But then you go to the game yeah. before that when they lost to the Pacers. So, you, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what they're yeah. seeing, but they need a point guard. I know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think you know, on paper, they definitely look like a playoff team, but the, on the court, it's just not meshing well. So they got to figure something out. And like you said, maybe having Alonzo not there is a, is a big hurt to them from a point guard perspective, being a leader, uh, scoring, defense, all the things that he brings, intangible. So I definitely think a uh, point guard is needed. So they got to find some way to kind of shore up that, that, uh, that, that space. Speaking of Lonzo, before we get into the rest of what we want to talk about, I did find out, I did some digging on Twitter. There's Bobby Marks at ESPN is really good with this front office stuff because he was GM of the Nets for a while. Yeah, the Bobby. Bulls, <laughs> yeah, they cannot get what how does he how did he word it? They can't get any relief now for Lonzo because of the injury. They're still on the hook. If it's a career ending injury with this third surgery, with what happened with that, I think down the road they can get some relief with the salary cap. So right now, yeah, they're on the hook for Lonzo's salary, and that impacts a lot when it comes to free agency yeah. and with the draft capital not being there, they're in a, they're in a tough spot, tougher spot than yeah. I thought they'd be. 
Yeah, it definitely hurts the franchise. Uh, like you said, it's, it's a business at the end of the day, and it's going to affect uh, who they sign in the future, this summer maybe. Uh, but hopefully, like you, know, like you said, down the road, they can get some disability for that and you know, kind of uh, get some of that money back, I'm sure. And don't get me wrong, I feel so bad for Lonzo. Like, I mean, this yeah. just, this whole thing just sucks. I, yeah. I, we know very well about point guards having knee issues in Chicago. This is yeah. giving me bad flashbacks, bad memories, like – that's from the personal standpoint, but you just said it's a business from yeah. a business standpoint. It's, I don't want to say catastrophic. I don't think we're at that point. It's not good from a business standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. yeah not good at all. Not good for the player not good for the business. And I, like I said, injuries just suck. So many injuries have ruined, you know, not ruined, but I guess, you know, hurt a lot of careers from hall of fame careers to MVPs and all that kind of stuff. And it, it just sucks for, for injuries to happen. You know, hopefully, you know, we can kind of find, a balance and uh, hopefully he can get back to the court. Yeah. And the sooner he can, the better. And if he has the surgery, it's a six month recovery. So who knows what's going to happen there. As of now, he hasn't made a decision, but right. I mean, it's still a lot to be determined. And that's why it'd be nice to have one of these first round picks that you have. Yeah. Like here's looking at March madness here. Cause I want to get it. This is just so fun. I fill up my bracket today. I picked UCLA to win the whole thing, which means they're going to get bounced in the round of 32 or the Sweet 16, but <laughs> I picked them to win the whole thing. Alabama is the favorite at plus 500. Houston right there at plus 550. That's according to Bet Online. I saw a stat that that's like the, the longest odds for a favorite in at least 20 years or something like that. This yeah. tournament's wide open. Not sure about your Vols. They worry me. That offense worries me. Yeah, me too. Uh, that's what been my whole thing the whole year. Uh, I've been telling people our defense can, you know, can shut some people down and give you a tough time. But our offense, you got to be able to score the ball uh, nowadays in college and, and professional. And uh, we can't score the ball that great. And especially with our point guard going down, it's going to hurt us a lot. So I think we'll we'll maybe make it to the second round. Uh, but probably after that, it's probably, that's probably all we get. And I, I pick uh, Purdue to maybe uh, take it all. Ooh, I don't know about Purdue. That offense, that's another offense that worries me. I, I cover. I did a lot of the Big Ten tournament this weekend yeah. for on three. The thing with Purdue, Zach Eady's a force. Yeah. And I mean, he's, he's unreal. There's a reason National Player of the Year contender, everything like that. When he's off the court, and he was off the court yeah. way too much yeah, in yeah. that championship game, all yeah. you've got to do is throw a little bit of pressure at him. They've got a young yeah. backcourt. You throw enough pressure at him, they don't know what to do. Before, yeah. And then you got to call a timeout. You got to, you're, it's a mess. So yeah. Purdue worries me. I have Purdue going down to sweet 16. Actually, okay. that, that team worries me a lot with yeah. that offense without Zach Eady. I mean, the, the whole big 10, I don't have a big 10 team making it past the elite eight, but right, yeah, yeah. they got all those teams. They beat up on each other too much in the regular season for my liking. Yeah. yeah. I like Alabama too. I like a couple of SEC teams. Uh, I don't think Kentucky's going to make it too far. Uh, Vandy, uh, uh, hopefully, you know, they'll, Get uh get a get to a couple of rounds, but yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. I I feel like I, every time I pick someone too, they always get knocked out. So you know, yeah. my bracket's always busted the second, third day. <laughs> yeah, I know Sister Jean picked Kentucky to win it all. I've got him getting first rounded. I think Providence yeah. is gonna beat him. I think you've got an angry Bryce Hopkins for Providence. You, yeah, and Cal and Kentucky, they've been without their point guard. He's been hurt. I think that was uh, was that Xavier Wheeler that's been hurt, or yeah, I think it was Xavier Wheeler went down. Casey Wallace has been beat up. Yeah. Kentucky's vulnerable, and yeah, yeah. I mean it's it's a shame because Casey Wallace is one of the guys I'm looking at in the draft if he was to, if he was to declare because he's right. a really good point guard, and you know yeah, a yeah. lot of the guys I picked out here are guards. That's what I'm looking for. You need right. guard play if you're Arturus and Eversley. Like you, you need guard yeah. play if you can get a pick. It's a matter of you've got to have a pick. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Guard play is definitely what helps you win in college and also in the NBA. So you, uh, the Bulls, number one, you know, uh, especially with the Lonzo situation, should be finding a, a point guard, a young guy who can score, who can pass, play defense, and, you know, just uh, hopefully develop into your future star. Yeah, Kaysen Wallace is one of the guys I put on here. Uh, Jalen hood Shafino out of Indiana, he'd be kind of a late first round because I, my pie in the sky scenario, let's say the Bulls don't have a top four pick and the Blazers pick stays with Portland. You don't have a first yep. rounder. I think you trade Demar, and you get a first round pick. And I think it's going to be you're going to trade to contender, so it's going to be late in the first yeah. round. Right. If that happens, I think a guy like Jalen Hood Shafino would be a really good pick. He was a five star recruit, highly touted recruit coming out of coming out of high school, went to Indiana. He he and Trace Jackson Davis. It's a really good two man game, and he can score yeah. too. Like he he yeah. can score. He's a pretty good defender. You got to be a good defender to play for Mike Woodson. Like yep. 
you know, that that's the type of guy I want to see. Someone like that who can he's not going to be the Lonzo caliber, but right. he can he can fill the role enough. And if Lonzo comes back, he can be a capable backup for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's what you want. Yeah, I don't want to watch watch a lot of college basketball, so I'll take your, you know, your expertise on it. <laughs> I know you watch the big ten all the time and I know you're you're very profound in the in the scouting world, I feel like. So I definitely take I your uh, <laughs> I'll take your expertise on any any player that they should be able to look out for. You know, I, I like the mid majors. That's my bread and butter, yeah. you know, covering Loyola. I covered the Missouri Valley for five years and yeah. you know, the Missouri Valley this year, oof. That's interesting situation. Drake's and Drake is my upset team, by the way. I got Drake as a twelve seed going to Sweet Sixteen. I really yeah. and I think and I mean, I've been on the record before. I'm gonna say it again. I think Darren DeVries is gonna be in conversation, be the head coach at Notre Dame. But yeah. uh, I've been I've said that multiple places now. Drake's got some guys. Maybe if you want to take a chance on like a two way guy, now it's right. an old team. They've got they've got guys on that team that are I think are my age, and I've been out of college now for three <laughs> years. But like, I'm, not, I'm not I'm not exaggerating. They've got 25 right. year old guys on that team. They've got their, their lineup is older than some NBA lineups. Right. Like, yeah. You're looking mid major. You can get a couple guys that way. In the right. lottery, the name to watch, and this is one I want to run by you, even with the off the court stuff, Brandon Miller. He's yeah. I saw Woj say he might even be the number two prospect in this draft and jump Scoot Henderson to yeah. be the number two pick. That's an interesting idea to me. No, yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, he reminds me of uh, uh, Kevin Durant. I mean, uh, obviously, it's a it's a big tall task to you know to put on a person, but his game reminds me of K- KD's, uh, especially in college. He can shoot it. Uh, Get to the basket, athletic. Uh, uh, played a little defense, you know, obviously, but uh, he definitely has all the attributes of being a, a pro and a, a long time pro, like a 10, 15 year career. So I definitely think he's a uh, going to be a lottery pick and top, probably top five. Also, I agree, he's a top five talent. And now that this is my job as a journalist, I have to tell you, there's the, the stuff off the court. I'm going to tell the yeah. listeners, here's what's happened here at Alabama. This is why I worry about them winning the tournament because of the off the court noise. In January, a player named Darius Miles shot and killed a woman in Alabama. He's been charged. He was indicted. That whole thing. He was kicked off the team, escorted off campus, thought that was over. Then it comes out in a testimony. Police testified that Brandon Miller provided the gun. That was according to the testimony that was used in the shooting. But he has not been charged with a crime. He is a witness, not a suspect. And that's led to a little bit of friction. I guess from right. the fans and everything he's heard about it, but he is a witness and not a suspect. He, it was not his, the gun was Darius Miles's gun. It was right. not Brandon Miller's gun. It was Darius Miles's. It was in uh, Brandon Miller's lawyer said he thought he was giving Darius Miles a ride home that night. Didn't know there was a gun in the car, so he did not touch it. That's the basis of what's right. been going on off the court, and I wanted to provide that for context here because that. To me, this whole thing, I, I'm one of those, let it sort out in the legal realm, let the police right. figure it out, let it get sorted out in the courts. But that has to be noted when we're talking about Brandon Miller. And I want to yeah, just yeah. reiterate again after I misspoke, he is a witness and not a suspect, according to police right now, as they investigate. Right, yeah. yeah I think, uh, you know, I'm sure when the NBA draft comes, all the uh, all the teams will do their due diligence, you know, and do all their research on them and find out exactly, you know, what happened and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it's just unfortunate for things that happen like that. And just definitely want to, you know, send the condolences to the, the girl's family for, for uh, that passed away. So, you know, things, uh, you know, don't, you don't want to hear about things like that, but kids always have to know, even college athletes, they're still role models. They're still mentors for, for little kids out there. And everyone's watching, you know, you know, regardless of what team you play for, they're watching you and kids are watching you. So you got to make the right choices and the right decision. Right. And I agree with you 100%. Like, condolences. Jamea Harris was the woman who was killed. Condolences to her family. And this, the whole situation is tragic. But, I mean, yeah, he yeah. was in the middle of it, and he's considered a lottery talent. Right. I mean, I, I think he could be. I agree with Woj, and I think he's he's the top college player right now. Yeah, yeah. The other guy I've talked about a little bit this year is Nick Smith Jr. out of Arkansas. He's combo guard. He can play point guard, shooting guard. Got to stay healthy, though. If he's healthy, yeah. Arkansas is a dangerous team. And Arkansas has got Illinois for our Illini fan listeners. It's Arkansas, yeah. Illinois in the first round. I had trouble picking that game. I ended up picking <laughs> Arkansas because, you know, must bus. I'm yeah. a big Eric Musselman <laughs> fan. I, I covered him at Nevada because Nevada played Loyola in the Sweet 16 and 18. That's an interesting dude. So I, yeah. I'm riding the must bus. If Nick Smith's healthy, Arkansas can make a run because he kind of drives their offense, I feel like. Yeah, I like him. I like him. I like their whole team. Actually, they're scrappy. They uh they play hard. Um, 
they're not they're they're not scared of anyone. They go out there and play with no fear. So uh, I definitely like them. Uh, my old coach Keith Smart is on that bench. So I, I, I root for him anytime. And my old teammate Ronnie Brewer uh, is on that bench also. So I didn't realize um, Ronnie Brewer was on that bench. How did I not know that? Yeah, yeah. And Ronnie Ronnie went to school there, so I'm definitely you know uh, rooting for both of those guys and for their team. So. How in the world did I not know Ronnie Brewer was there? I mean, I don't. I, with you do your research, terrible. man. I, I guess I'm, I guess terrible I'm doing more assistant. research than you are behind. The I scenes. guess. <laughs> I guess. I mean, I with the assistant coaches, I'm terrible with it. Unless I like, you know, I've got one of my guys from Loyola actually, Keith Clemens, is a grad assistant at Tennessee. I knew that. Okay. Okay. I know okay. that. But other than that, with assistant coaches, man, I am so bad at it anymore. Like I was yeah. watching the Texas game. This was a couple months ago, and I look on the bench, I'm like, is that Steve McLean? Steve McLean used to coach at UIC. And I okay. look, I'm like, I forgot he was there. Like, I am so bad when it comes to assistance. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't know why. I mean, unless it's a team I cover, I got, I got nothing. Right. But, yeah. It's yeah, a, people Brewer, are always that's... moving around, so it's always you know, yes, move around, moving parts. Uh, some people I feel like are better assistants than they are head coaches. So you know, and that's okay. All, it, 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 yeah, it works. Yeah, it's uh, it's it just it just works. Has a has how the ball crumbles sometimes. Yeah, and I just I hadn't heard the name Ronnie Brewer in a while, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe I did that. Um, and I got one more name to throw out at you. And I don't know how much Michigan you've watched this year. Jet Howard out of Michigan. He's a great shooter. It's Juwan Howard's yep. kid. And I yep. I mean, we've talked before. I think Juwan <laughs> is, I think he fits the professional coaching mode. I mean, he was out with the Miami Heat before he went back to his alma mater. Yep. I think Jet Howard is a good shooter. And you sense a theme here with these guys I picked out. All of these guys can shoot the basketball. <laughs> Right. All well, year, exactly, you heard me exactly say, what the Bulls need. Yeah. <laughs> right. All year, you heard me say this team can't shoot. So here's some help. If you can get a yeah. first round pick, any one of these guys can help. Even Case and Wallace, he can he can shoot. He fits that more of the true point guard mode. He's going to facilitate. He can yeah. still shoot. Like Jet Howard is one of the best shooters in this draft. So if you're in yeah. position for him, that's that's the guy I'm really looking at. And I think Michigan. Where did they fall? I think they might actually be. Are they in the NIT even? I don't know if they're in the NCAAs or not. I don't remember. I don't think they are. I think they're in the NIT. But either way, Jed Howard, look up some film. Like, yeah. that's a really – he's a pure shooter. He's yeah, not too yeah. – the watched, apple doesn't fall far from the tree on that one. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, I watched him a couple of times. I definitely like his game. Uh, definitely uh, been impressed by the way he shoots the ball. And uh, like I said, I'm sure he's a, he's a dad of a professional athlete. Uh, I'm sure his dad's in his ear talking about it, the next steps and, you know, what that could look like and – it's all how you got to stay focused and, you know, sacrifice, all that kind of stuff. So I'm definitely sure that his dad, you know, is always talking to him and stuff like that. But I, I definitely like his game. Like the shooting uh, definitely can be something that can be added to the Bulls and exactly what they need. Michigan's a two seed in the NIT, by the way. They play Toledo in the first round. So if you're into watching the NIT, I don't. Michigan didn't have a great year. And I think yeah. there's I, – I don't know what to think of that. I thought they'd be better than they were. Part of that's the Big Ten. Again, they beat up on each other so much yeah. in the regular season. It's hard to tell who's the best team sometimes. Yeah. But Michigan and the NIT, if you want to turn on ESPN and watch it, go for it. You're going to see some really good shooting from that yeah. team. So th those are really the five guys i got my eye on. But there, I mean, there are others that are going to make names. I mean, Marcus Sasser out of Houston, if he's healthy, yeah. he's, he hurt his groin in the conference yeah. tournament. That's why Houston plus 550, I'm sitting there going, eh, let's right. be careful here, tread lightly. Right. But, you know, this is going to be a really fun month because I have no idea who's going to win this whole thing. Yeah, you never know. And it's going to be a lot of players who make them name, who make names for themselves come on the tournament uh, who uh, who will shock you, who never thought about it. And they'll end up being a lottery pick. So, you know, uh, it's always a couple of those players who come out of nowhere and, uh, you know, make names for themselves and create a future for themselves. So this is the, the best time to do it. You know, the best time, like you said, a couple of weeks ago, the best time is in March. Uh, the weather's getting better. Uh, basketball, you know. Trying uh, to get better. All, all, yeah, yeah, trying to. It depends <laughs> on where you live, <laughs> and uh, you know, it's just fun time to to be uh, to be alive. Yeah, and I mean, I'm a golf fan. You got the Masters coming around. You got baseball yeah. starting up. You got March Madness, NBA, hockey's yeah. still a thing. You can watch hockey if you want. Not the Blackhawks aren't good, but hey, whatever floats your boat there. Yeah, like this is gonna be fun. And you talk about guys who make a name for themselves. I think back to, and I want to. I don't think I've ever talked to you about this. The tournament that got canceled in 2020. One guy I think who would have benefited the most from an NCAA tournament and being on that stage is Patrick Williams. I think if yeah. Patrick Williams was on that stage at the sixth man at Florida State, yeah. I really think you'd have heard his name more because I had never heard of him until like right. a day before the draft and all of a sudden he's number four pick. Like right, that's yeah. the type of effect that this tournament could have. 
Yeah, for sure. It gives you experience. It gives you, uh, you know, experience to, to all the bright lights that you may not have gotten in a smaller conference or anything like that. So it's definitely a lot more attention drawn onto you and it just makes you, you know, uh, puts a lot of pressure on you. And I think pressure busts pipes and, you know, it's either you step up or you don't. So I think most players will, you know, step up the ones that are, you know, primed to be those big time players. And uh, most of the time uh, they, they do that. Yeah, you know, I remember talking to Chuck Swirsky after that. I had him on my radio show at the time. And I remember talking to him. I'm like, yeah, do you, do you think Patrick Williams could have benefited from March Madness? He's like, oh, yeah. Like, he's yeah. a good player. Like, I mean, right. he's the way he's developed is going well. That's one of the – that's why I'm looking at, like, if they if they have a first-round pick, and I'm praying to God that they do, like, that's why I'm like, okay, don't look size. Last year was about getting size and get get the line right. bigger. Now go get some shooting. And whether yeah. that be if you, if you have – I haven't looked at the cap situation either – it's going to be a weird, not, I, I keep using interesting. I throw it out there like it's nothing. A weird off season is coming up yeah. after these next 15 games. We're almost there. 15 games. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, coming, it's coming fast. <laughs> yeah. It's coming real fast. And we can finally quit complaining about the team being up and down and up and down and beat the good teams, lose to the bad team, beat a bad team by eight points after losing by 10 in the first quarter. Yeah. I, I, I hey, tell man. you, I, I saw that score. I, t- I whispered over to my mom during the play, and I'm like, yep, that's the Bulls I know and love. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're going to follow March Madness. This is going to be fun. I'm so, I am love this, and I know, like, we're – I feel like everybody's locked into college basketball at this point. Like, yeah. I'm going to be – for work, I'm going to be watching most, if not all, of the games. Like, I've got yeah. – I'm going to have a whole setup. It's going to be very similar to my NFL draft setup with my war room. Like, it's going to be fun. And, again, yeah. there's going to be guys who surprise, and there's going to be teams yeah. who surprise. It's the nature yeah. of March. And, I mean, yeah. my – my Ramblers are out of it. They had a bad year, so I'll be pulling. I'll pull for your balls. I'll pull for Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, that's that's me. I just gonna watch, like to watch basketball, pull up for the balls, and just watching good basketball. I feel like uh, you yes. know, watching players make names for themselves, and you know, teams come out of nowhere and shock some people. I'm always looking forward to the to the one shotting moment. That's kind of like my cool theme to watch at the end of the tournament. Yes. So it's pretty cool how they put it together so fast. <laughs> I've read stories about how they do it. I'm so yeah. glad I'm not in that room. That oh yeah, stressful. yeah. That's stressful how they do yeah. that. I yeah. Bet. But now we're going to follow March Bad. We're going to keep following the Bulls too, obviously. And we just want, we're going to do, we're going to talk about other stuff in the roller coaster Bulls season too, as we get into this crazy time of year where there's a lot of things intersecting with the draft and free agency. And you're going to have all this, di- all different situations kind of coming to light. We're going to break that all down, break down the Bulls. Um, enjoy the madness, enjoy the tournament, enjoy the NBA. That's a wrap for today's episode of Believe in Bulls on the Believe Network, presented by our friends at betonline.ag. Good time to mention that promo code again, BLEAV, 50% welcome bonus bet on the madness. If you want to bet on Justin Fields, win the MVP, I wouldn't blame you one bit. <laughs> and also shop.believe.com, buy our shirt, Jordan Pippen 98, the last dance. CJ, always fun, man. We'll see you back here later this week, hopefully talking about more crazy playoff scenarios. Yep, yep. Let's go, Bulls. Get it done. Yeah, I hope you're right. Just don't let Orlando <laughs> pick in the, don't let Orlando have the number five pick. Don't let yep. that happen. See everybody here later in the week. <laughs>